But many are calling Trump's speech incoherent, that there is no clear messaging in it. We have identified three things that were missing from Trump's speech. The first omission was a welcome one, retaliation. He boasted of America's military prowess but did not threaten to use them on Iran. There were no threats of attacking cultural sites or promises of fire and fury. Iraq was largely missing in his speech. The attack happened on Iraqi soil and its parliament and prime minister both want U.S. troops out of the country. Yet he mentioned Iraq only thrice and that too only while saying that there were no Iraqi casualties in the strike. And lastly, what exactly is Trump's strategy here? Will U.S. troops remain in West Asia? Trump said that he wants to get the U.S. out of West Asia as soon as possible, but in the same breath asked for NATO to be more involved in the region, the same NATO that is led by the U.S. One thing Trump was very certain about was sanctions. The U.S. will immediately impose sanctions that he described as punishing. But Iran is already heavily sanctioned. Most industries and even its sovereign fund is subject to sanctions. But sources in the U.S. Treasury Department have hinted at the metal sector as a possible target. The metal industry in Iran employs close to 50,000 people and it earns nearly $4 billion every year through exports. More than 24 hours after Iran's strike on U.S. bases in Iraq, what is the situation on the ground? There are some encouraging signs. One, an influential Shiite cleric in Iraq, Moqtada al-Sadr, has urged the militias to not carry out any attacks on U.S. assets. It's important to note here that al-Sadr is a nationalist who has positioned himself against both Iran and U.S. influence in Iraq. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence also had some positive information. He said that the U.S. was receiving intelligence reports from Iran that seemed to indicate that Tehran was asking its allied militias to not attack U.S. troops.